Well, welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to J. Crew. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made, and we have come together to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I pray that you have had a blessed, good week, and I pray that um, you have put into practice some of the things that you have learned about the Word of God. That is Jesus' most blessed desire, is that each one of us are being trained to follow in his footsteps. And to follow in Jesus' footsteps, you need the word of God. And that is why we're here today, is to share with you another portion of God's word. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into prayer. And after prayer, we're going to go right into his word. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing in each of our lives. Father, we pray that you are blessed. Bless the children, dear Lord. Bless their hearts, their minds, and their spirits as they listen to your word, dear Lord. I pray that your word will be like a seed planted in their hearts, dear Lord, that produce fruit and bear much fruit as they put into practice what they learn, Lord. And I pray that you will bless each teacher. Bless me, dear Lord, as, as we put together a message for the children, dear Lord, that it will be meaningful, that it will be insightful, dear Lord, that it will make sense to them so that they will understand how much you truly love them and how you desire for them to fall in love with you. Lord, that is our goal and that is our purpose, is to teach the kids how good you really are and how wonderful it would be if they just fall in love with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so boys and girls, now we're going to go into the word for today. All right, we're going to pause for a moment and go into the word, so go get your Bibles because we're going to be using the word of God. Amen? Amen. I'm building a tower very high so it can touch God's sky. Oh, hello, boys and girls. My name is Miss Moles. I was building a tower. That's because our Bible lesson is about a tower. Do you know what a tower is? Well, a tower is a very, very tall building. Here are some towers of some of the tallest ones in the world, but the tower that the people built in the early Bible days didn't look like the towers today. But anyway, I'm going to do a finger play to help you have a clue of what our Bible lesson is about today and to help you to listen. But first, let's pray. Our hands we fold so tightly, our heads we bow so gently. Dear God, you are greatest of all. There's no one great like you. Thank you, O Lord, that we're back together again to learn from your holy book, the Bible. Teach us what you want us to know about sin. Bless everyone that's watching and bless this lesson. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to say a finger play, and it's going to, as I said, help give you a clue of what our Bible lesson is about today and to help you get ready to listen. Now, if you have a Bible, I know many of you have Bibles, you can pause the video and go and get your Bible because I'm going to read our Bible lesson today directly from the Bible. Now, the finger play. It's called the Tower of Babel. We build a tower way up high, almost to God's sky. Say what? Gibbly, gibbly, gabbly, go. What? Gibbly, gibbly, gabbly, go. Babel, 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 babel. No more building the tower. God scattered the people all over the earth. God is to be praised. All power. Well, boys and girls, that's finger play. Do you have an idea what it's about? Well, we know Babel is in it. Do you know what Babel means? Well, let's see if you find out. Well, here we go. Our Bible lessons, as you always know, come from God's holy book, the Bible. The Bible is the most important book you ever have because it's the true word of God. 
And our Bible lesson today comes from the first book in, G in the Bible, Genesis. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. And the title of this lesson in the Bible is called The Tower of Babel. Now put on your listening ears and get ready to listen and follow along in your Bible if you have one. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in China and they settled there. Well, they said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake thoroughly. Well, do you know what boys and girls? God had told Noah's people to have lots of children and then to spread all over the earth. But they didn't do that. They disobeyed God. That's a sin. And then the Bible says they used brick instead of stone and tar for martyr. Now this is the brick that they used. And you notice that they're big bricks. And you can see the dark spaces. That's the mortar that they used to hold the bricks together. Well, the people kept building their tower and they stayed in the city and didn't scatter like God said. So they said, come, let's build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heaven so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Wow, these people want to be famous. They want to make a name for themselves. Rather than praising God, they were praising themselves. And that's a sin because we should praise only God and no one is greater than God. God is greatest of all. So guess what? The Lord came down as they were building their tower. Look at it. It's really getting big. So the Lord came down. And he said, to see the city and the tower that the men were building, the Lord said, as one people speak in the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So God came down and he saw what they were doing. And God did not like it, did he? So what did God do? The Bible says, God said, come. Let us go down and confuse their language so they would not understand each other. That means God mixed up their language so they couldn't understand each other. If one person said, hand me two bricks, it would sound like gibbly gobbly goo. And if another person said, I need some mortar, it would sound like gobbly gobbly goo. He mixed up their language. So no one can build anything if they don't understand each other. And after that, the Bible says in verse 8, So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel. And what does Babel mean? Mixed up words that nobody can understand. That's why it was called Babel. Because... There the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over all the face of the whole earth. Boys and girls, what is God telling us in this story? God is telling us that we should obey him. And Noah's people did not obey God. He told them to scatter the whole earth would have lots of children. Well, they had lots of children, but then they decided they were going to stay in one place. They weren't going to scatter. So they disobeyed God, and disobeying God is a sin. They also wanted to show themselves off. They thought that they were great like God, and there's none, no one in the whole world greater than God. God is the greatest of all. Well, we know that God hates sin. Cross it out like this. But God loves us. He sent Jesus to save us from our sin. 
And if we believe that God sent Jesus from heaven to earth to die on the cross for our sins, to be buried in a tomb, and then on the third day raised again, God promised that we will one day live with Jesus forever. Jesus rescues us from sin. Well, boys and girls, I hope you remember that story because we know that God is greatest of all. And before we go, we are going to do a memory verse. And it's a key passage and it's found in the book of Romans chapter 3. It's our memory verse for today. And I have it right here highlighted in my Bible. And it says, it's in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And the memory verse says right here, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means we all have sinned. But that's why Jesus sent Jesus came to save us from our sin. So let's sing our memory verse in the tune of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Do you know that tune? Da 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 da. Well, we're gonna sing our memory verse for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Now we have two motions with this song. We're going to do X for sin. And then when we say Bible, put your hands together like this to make a pretend open Bible. So here we go. For all have sinned. Aldi. For all have sinned and fall short and fall short and fall short. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Let's try that one more time. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Here we go. For all have sinned and fall short and fall short and fall short. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Wonderful singing, boys and girls. Well, I hope you enjoyed our lesson today, the Tower of Babel. And before we go, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. And now let's get ready to send a big goodbye hug to all our friends on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Goodbye. See you next time. Hi, J. Crew. This is Miss Evelyn coming to you from my home to yours. I am so happy to be with you today. I hope you are having a good week and had a good week in school. And I wanted to just say it is so good to see you virtually here. And I hope you will have a good week for the upcoming week. So let's get started today. We are going to just open up with a, a word of prayer. So bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for each and every child that is present today. Lord, I hope that their hearts are open and receptive to learning more about your word. We look forward to having a good lesson, and we look forward to them being attentive to learning and hearing more about what you have to say and what your word is bringing us today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, we're talking about um, a subject called rebelling. So hopefully you guys, uh, if you don't know the word, you will figure out what the word means as we go through the lesson. So the title of our lesson is People Rebel Against God. So we're continuing our lesson in Genesis. 
So our lesson is coming from Genesis chapter 10, chapter 11 uh, today. And we're going to talk about the Bible story in the lesson. So we have a key passage, a Bible verse. So hopefully you have your Bibles with you. So you can write down, we're going to be talking about Romans 3 and 23. So that's chapter 3, verse 23. So I'm going to read that and hopefully you can find it in your Bible and you can uh, have it memorized before the end of the lesson. And so the translation we're using is the New Living Translation, it's called NLT. And it says, for everyone has sinned, that means you and me too, <laughs> We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So that means we do not always follow what God tells us to do. But we do know that we're able to repent and God will forgive us. And so for our big picture question for today, uh, our theme is what does sin mean? Or what does it mean to sin? So for the answer for that, that is to sin is to think and speak or behave in any way that goes against God's commands. So hopefully you know where we find God's commands. I'm going to let you think about that for a minute and I will keep talking and we can tell you about what God commands are or where they are. <clears throat> So hopefully you will remember that you learn about God's command quite often, actually. So every weekend that you come to J. Crew, you learn about God's command. Also, if you go to Awana, you learn about God and his commands. And then when you read the Bible, you learn more about God and his commands. So hopefully you just got the answer. So when I ask the question about where we learn about God and his commands, hopefully each of you were thinking that the answer is the Bible. Yes, the B-I-B-L-E. You learn there about God's command. And then God's uh, is inspired and chose, and chose individuals <laughs> to uh, basically write the Bible. So he inspired individuals back in, as I say, the olden days to write his commands and then we got the Bible from them writing his commands. So in our lesson today, we're gonna talk about one of the Bible stories and what God's command was to his people then. So his command was for the people to be fruitful and multiply. So if you read through Genesis in chapter 10 and probably maybe nine as well, it talks about God wanted the people to be fruitful and multiply. So last week we talked about Noah and how God spared his family. So Noah, once they got out of the ark, the families began to multiply. So there were many people that were born after Noah and his family came out of the ark. So initially they followed God's command which was to be fruitful and multiply and to fill the earth. So as they were doing that over time then there got to be more people and as they were traveling across the earth the people found a valley and they liked the valley and they decided to stay and said okay we like this valley we're going to build a tower and see if we can build it you know way into the sky to reach the heavens and so when they did that guess what they did not obey God's command and that was a sin so God observed what they were doing and realized that they were being disobedient and not following his command and they were going to continue to build this tower. So instead of allowing them to build the tower, 
God confused their language. So what that means is they were all able to communicate with each other and learn how to build and continue to build. And when God confused their language, they couldn't understand each other anymore. So they were not able to continue to build that tower. So as you know, when you do sin, there's always going to be what consequences or punishment or something that has to result from that. So when they could no longer build the tower, that was the consequence. They, they were scattered across the earth. And believe it or not, then they were able to replenish the earth. So in summary, the people sinned by not following God's command to be fruitful and multiply at the time that he asked them to do that. They decided they were going to do something else and build a tower so that they can be considered great and famous. So that's our summary for the day, that you have to follow God's command no matter what they are. And if you don't, there are consequences. However, we can still repent, which means ask God for forgiveness and don't do it anymore. So, how does this relate to what we learn about all the time about Jesus Christ? So, as you know, that story was back in the olden days, as I said. So, that was the um, people wanted to glorify themselves rather than God. So now, you know, that they ignored God's command and God confused their language and scattered them across the earth. But now, Jesus Christ, he is going to come back one day and he is going to allow everyone to be able to understand each language, even people who initially spoke different language, and we would all praise and worship God to, together. So again... We must follow God's commands that are in the Bible. So that's what I want you to remember today. So when they go went against what God said, they rebelled against God. We don't want to rebel. We want to follow his commands. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Make sure you get your Bibles. Read it later, which is Genesis chapter 10. And then also read Romans chapter 3, verses 23. So let's close out in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. I hope the children learn from this lesson and know that we must all follow God's command and not sin against God. We thank you that they will have this word in their heart and they will share the word with their families and with their friends to follow God's command. We pray that they have a blessed and prosperous week. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good week.